50 chapter 3. This is the true saying. Man desires office of a pencil. He desires a good work. The pictures then must be blameless. The husband of one wife built up sober and good behavior, given to hospitality after teach. Not given to wine, nor striker, nor greed, nor guilty lurks, nor patience, not a brawler, not covetous, one that rules well in his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man knows not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? But not a novice that's being left up, lifted up with pride, he will fall into condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snares of the devil. Likewise, must the deacon be grave, not double tongued, not given much wine, not greedy of filthy flesh, holding the mystery of faith in pure consent. Let this also first be proved, and let him then use of the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so much their wives be great, not slanderous, sober, faithful unto all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house well. For they that have used the office of deacon for purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Jesus Christ. Things which things written unto these hope come unto shortly. But if I tell you alone, that thou may know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, fill in the ground of the earth truth. And without purposes Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in his spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed in the believed on in the world, received up of the glory. When the king has Use the office of deacon well. Uh, that's why we went through the whole thing of deacon ambition. He has proven himself as deacon, and that's why he's come to this point. Uh, at the end of this service, he will still be deacon, unless he choose otherwise. Amen. We're not dropping him down as deacon, amen. But it's been an honor and privilege to have him as deacon in our church. And this time we're going to bring forth Reverend Larry Griffin, who is going to bring. Uh, the scriptures of God's call on the life. Go to that. Truly, Brother Keith, it is an honor and a privilege to uh, take part um, in this. Uh, I can tell you, he is a real true friend, and uh, 
my fellow sports affairs in Christ. And he, he really, he really, uh, I knew it was coming, but God had done told me. I told him one time to fill in for Brother King, and Brother King said, well, you know, Brother King asked me to fill in. He said, but I didn't think that to do. I said, but why, Brother King? Why? You can do it just as well as anyone else. And look at him now. He's doing it. Just as I told him he could do it. I knew he could do it. But my God has done told me. My God has done it. He has done verified that word to me. And I knew that he was a man of God that would preach nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. And it is truly an honor and privilege today um, for me to have part in this. Um, First Timothy chapter 4, and I'm going to start with verse 4. For every creature of God is good, and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine, Whereunto thou hast obtained, but with you profane and old wise fable, and exercise thyself rather unto goodness. For bodily exercise costly is little, but goodness is profitable too. Unto all things, having the promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all exceptions. For well, therefore we both labor and suffer with truth, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach, that no man despise thy youth. Be, but be thou an example of the believers in the word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in truth, till I come. Give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Ne- neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of prophecy. Meditate upon these things, give thyself holy to them, that thy prophecy may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them, for in doing so, for in doing this, thou shalt forsake thyself and them that hear thee. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This time I want to ask Sister Rodine if she'd come and take her husband by the hand. Amen. As we move to this final part of this service. Uh, behind every good preacher, there is a woman that has had to take a lot, hear a lot, put up with a lot, and forgive a lot. And in the ministry, the wife is an unsung hero that has to receive a lot, take a lot, 